So um, in a separate video, I show you how to take your own photographs and use SketchUp's match photo tools to generate a model and then turn it into an energy model. Uh, Google also has a web-based tool called Building Maker that allows you to do this without even having SketchUp. And uh, um, it also comes with oblique aerial photographs, so you don't need your own. Uh, and these are highly calibrated photographs, which makes it a really nice process. Um, you can go to a web browser and search for Building Maker and just directly do it through a website. However, if you do have SketchUp, um, there's a little button here uh, called Add New Building. So uh, I'm going to uh, click that, and it's going to launch basically a web browser within uh, SketchUp. I'm going to maximize this so you can see it. Uh, it's Google Maps, but you don't you can't search for an address like you would if it was just uh, the standard uh, implementation of it. You just have these. Uh, cities that you can click on and if you don't want to zoom in and click on them then you can also just go to the pull down menu here and I'm going to choose Denver and it'll just zoom me in there. Uh, this line represents the limits of their oblique photography so if I zoom outside of that uh, more than likely it will not let me choose that as a location for the uh, uh, building. So I'm going to zoom in on this building here I got a little ahead of myself here waiting on, I'm using wireless for this, so it's a little bit slower. So um, there we go. That little red indicator is, is what I want to pan around and have my building on top of that. And as I zoom in close enough, then Google will bring up the oblique photographs of the building. And I'm going to start doing that now. So when I start the building, um, it will load six photographs. And we can always add more to that. Um, I'm going to click this to add a box here. Um, you can add some other shapes too, but uh, a box is a good thing to start with. So uh, I'm going to pin the top corners of this here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So it looks a little bit off here, uh, but it doesn't know anything about my building. As soon as I get these corners pinned down, it'll start to behave uh, more like it should, or like you'd expect it to, rather. So I have the top, and I'm going to pull this corner down here. Uh, I know my building actually probably goes a little below that, but for this exercise, we'll stop there. Or actually, yeah, that's fine. We'll just stop there for this one. It'll float a little in the air. So when I go to my next photograph, you'll know that it's close to the right place. It's a little bit off. I'm going to come over here and pin just a few points down and go to another photograph. And each photograph will get tighter and tighter uh, where I don't have to do much on it. Um, I actually do need to at least add a single pin if I want to use the textures from these buildings here. Uh, and I think four is enough. It comes with six, uh, and if you decide after you look at those six that you don't have quite the angle you want, uh, then you can click Add More, and it will keep bringing on more. Um, you can actually also add uh, Street View images, and then at some point you can add your own images too once you've done a little more calibration on your project. So um, I'm done. Um, I have a few options here. I can actually go to Viewer, and it'll launch 3D, uh, the uh, uh, Google Earth plugin. And here is my building that I just modeled. And if I give it enough time, textures will come on there. So I've just modeled a, I don't know, 15-story high-rise uh, in about one minute. Now, I can turn on other buildings, but uh, the reason I turn them off is, um, as I suspected, someone else beat me to modeling this building. So uh, you see two buildings on top of each other with slightly different positions. Um, so what's nice about Building Maker is because you're working with these oblique photographs and it's using a photometric process, um, your accuracy is going to be really good uh, and you have uh, confidence that your building is going to be the appropriate height. Um, so if you're going to use it for shading, then, then it's going to give you uh, accurate data for that. So uh, I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to uh, save. Now, I forgot to sign in. Uh, Building Maker is actually really nice about this. Um, it'll save my data while I'm doing that. It should remember my model, and I'm going to save that model now. Uh, and actually, you know, um, we could save that here, and it, it'll get published to Google, to Google Earth if there wasn't one there. But uh, when you're doing this from within SketchUp, you have the SketchUp export button. If you just did this straight through a web browser, you wouldn't see that button. So I'm going to export it to SketchUp here. Uh, I'm just going to leave the default name there. So this will take a second. Uh, I may cut some of this out so you don't have to watch that spin on your computer. And um, okay, so 
uh, it's going to open up a new SketchUp file. I don't need to save changes in my other one. And I now have a SketchUp file with all the textures applied. Uh, so what I could do now, for example, uh, well, a few things. One, you have all these different scenes. And these scenes relate to the cameras that were set up in uh, um, Building Maker. Um, you can also go to Camera Igloo and orbit around and see the different photographs that were used. And then if I want to jump to this photograph, I can double click to line up with it and then hit return and it'll zoom me in. Um, so I'm going to end this here and then we'll pick up a new tutorial next that will show you how to turn this into an Energy Plus uh, object.